Well, we are just back from Cannonball, North Dakota, where thousands of people have flocked from across the United States, Latin America and Canada over the months to join the resistance camps opposing the construction of the $3.8 billion Dakota Access Pipeline. Most are Native Americans, representing hundreds of tribes and First Nations from across the Americas. The ongoing encampment is considered to be one of the largest gatherings of Native Americans in decades. In the camps, people have set up multiple kitchens, a school that teaches Lakota languages and other subjects, medical services to care for the people who've come uh, to resist the pipeline. And now it looks like there'll be at least one more person to be taught and cared for at the camp. Just yesterday, a group of indigenous midwives posted online that the first baby was born in the camp. Well, on Saturday, at the main resistance camp in Cannonball, North Dakota, I spoke with women and midwives about the importance of reproductive health care at the resistance camps and on the reservation. Melissa Rose. Carolina Reyes. Yuwitawi. Uh, and can you talk about what you have set up here at the resistance camp? Yes, we've come with a group of women to be able to support women's health here um, at the encampment. Um, sovereignty for indigenous people is um, only going to come about through the support of women and women's health um, in the same way that we defend and protect Mother Earth is the same way that we need to defend and protect women and the next generations of children being born. And that's why um, not only is there a fully staff, staffed and run um, volunteer run clinic here um, that runs 24 hours, seven days a week um, at the at the camp, but there's also now going to be a women's space where traditional midwifery is going to be promoted and utilized to um, support the women here. You're a midwife? I am. And Yuitui, you're from Cheyenne River. Um, how far is the reservation from here? Um, I don't know exactly the reservation line, um, but where I live is about two, two and a half hours from here because, you know, Standing Rock and Cheyenne River are connected. So. I, I, there's a highway. I'm not sure what it is, but so talk about what it means to you that there's this women's health clinic, this midwifery clinic, right on site. Um, I believe. Well, first of all, I want to say I'm speaking on behalf of the Wambly Gleshka Wia Okola Kichie, and um, what we do is help in the community in healing the bonds between women and children, because you know the women are the backbone of the, the communities and the families. So um, it's very important to us that um, these healings take place um, because it has an effect on our children. And um, having, having the midwives come back and us performing the ceremonies that needed to be performed from the point of conception until birth and even after birth is very important for the spiritual connectedness of our children with our families. And um, because we're not doing that, we see so many of our children that are lost to drugs and alcohol and violence and suicide. So by making these healing connections and performing these ceremonies and having the families involved in the birth, um, I think that is very important for our people, not only um, mentally, but spiritually. And having that here at the camp um, is, um, I think, really going to be powerful for the women that are here. What happens to women who give birth in Cheyenne River? Um, right now, we have one doctor that comes from Pierre. And um, he schedules the women's births based on his schedule and induces them. So I would say, like, at least 90% of the women in Cheyenne River who have babies are scheduled on his schedule. And that's not, it's not right for our children to be born that way. How did that happen? So they don't go into labor at home and then, uh, when they're ready, come to the clinic if or the they, hospital. If they do not have their baby based on whatever due date he gives them, then he's, I, I, I've even had other personal family members that I have who said, okay, well, um, it's my due date, but he wants to have me come in early to schedule a birth. So then, you know, based on his schedule, he schedules them, they go in, they get induced, and then they're out the door. So it's almost like they're running cattle through, you know, that the, the IHS, and it's not right. Melissa, what does it mean to be a native midwife? Um, we were discussing this earlier, and it is it, there are ties, traditional ties, to the women who take care of women 
in the tribe and um, that take care of the children and they have a lifetime tie to those children. And it's very important that they grow up with those ties and that they are always connected to their home and their home place and their family. And that's what it means. And where do you live? I live in Colorado Springs now. And what has it meant for you to come to this camp and why did you come here? Um, my family is here, my relatives are here. They're fighting a, a really hard fight and I have skills to offer them um, that, that's very much needed here. And we found out even after I got here how much more it was needed than we even knew. And what um, nation are you with? Akwasasni Mohawk. The battle against the pipeline, why is that a battle that matters to you in Colorado Springs? Um, I'm downriver. We're all downriver at, at some point. We're all ground zero. Everyone on the planet is, is on ground zero somewhere. And our first home is water. And I'm very intimately connected with that. And I think that's why we're all connected here. So the clinic you're setting up here goes beyond midwifery. Yes. It is a women's space. And yes. explain what your plans are. Yes. Well, Amy, the roots of this is actually goes back to, you know, the recent history of um, health care for birth um, for indigenous women in um, North America, and in this country in particular, um, where, for instance, um, Indian Health Services had a, a policy of forcibly sterilizing indigenous women. From 1973 to 1976, more than 3,000 women were forcibly sterilized, even women under the age of 21. Um, and so that decreased in the, between the 1970s and 1980s, that decreased the birth rate for native population in the United States of America from 3.8 percent to 1.8 percent. So that is genocide, and that cannot continue to happen. That is genocide of indigenous women, and just the same way that this pipeline is the genocide of our Mother Earth, and it's the genocide of the river and the water that feeds us all, that nourishes us all, just as it did in the womb. So. Um, that is why we're doing this um, here, to support the women, to come back from that colonization. You know, right now, Native women, um, this space in particular um, creates um, the, the, the potential, the possibility that um, women, that we can decolonize, um, not just through birth, um, but really come back to a place of matriarchy and um, respecting women in a way that we can also respect Mother Earth and not lay pipelines in her, not dig out her liver, her coal, just as they're doing in Black Mesa, Big Mountain, Sovereign Diné Nation, just as they're doing all across the world and across the globe. And right now we're here, but everywhere people are, in your home communities, find out who the Native folks are there that are living there. Find out what they're battling. Find out what the battles are and how you can support them, because they are doing it for all of us, mm -hmm. for all future generations, for all the babies to come. We need this water. We need this earth to be healthy, to be beautiful for them to live in. Um, I come from occupied Tahana Autumn land in so-called Tucson now, and um, there is a copper mine that's trying to take away, um, to take a sacred um, uh, land from uh, the Apache there called uh, Oak Flat. Um, so I've been involved in that issue as well. I mean, everywhere we come from, those battles are there. So I want to make that connection for folks at home to, to look around you and to find the Native people around you and the battles that they're fighting for. If you can't come here, support them there. Midwives Carolina Reyes and Melissa Rose, as well as Yuita Wynn from Cheyenne River Reservation.